Good day, and welcome to another edition of Theology Thursday. Um, for uh, Orthodox Jews of today and Jews in Jesus' time and really throughout history, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 is very, very significant, and it should be for Christians as well and anybody that believes and loves the Bible. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4, we run into what's called the Great Shema, uh, Shema Yisrael is how it begins. So Deuteronomy 6, 4 says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You will teach them diligently to your children, and you'll talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You will bind them as a sign on your hand, and they will be as frontlets between your eyes. You'll write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So I don't want to talk about the whole thing because uh, just this passage would take us probably two or three Theology Thursdays. But I want to talk about this one particular verse, uh, verse 8, Deuteronomy 6, 8. You will bind them as a sign on your hand and frontless between your eyes. Uh, a tradition developed called phylacteries, interpreting this very, very literally. And so Jesus actually addresses this issue of phylacteries in Matthew chapter 23. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and observe what they tell you, but not the works that they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogue. And greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others. Uh, so, um, you know, what Jesus, and the fringes has to do with the borders of their uh, robes, and we're not going to deal with that today, but they talk about, you know, the phylacteries broad. So, uh, what happened was they took this, I mean, literally, they literally would bind scripture on their hand and on their, their forehead, you know, frontless between their eyes. And in these boxes, uh, four passages of scripture uh, would be, uh, and they have to be written, and it has to be on kosher paper and kosher ink and all that, um, but uh, there are four uh, little bitty rolled up parchments of scripture, Exodus 13, 1 through 10, Exodus 13, 11 through 16, both the passages that talk about God's word being between our eyes or something like that, it's very similar to what we see here, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, which I just read, and then Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 to 21. Uh, so you can pause the video and get those down, look them up if you would like. So <clears throat> I want to talk about uh, these phylacteries, and I'm going to talk a little bit, of, well, a lot, about what happens with traditions and what happens with misunderstanding and misapplying what the Bible is teaching. So uh, Jews today still wear phylacteries. Uh, they don't always call them phylacteries. Uh, often they call them teflon. Um, prayer boxes, and so they are to be worn when praying. They don't wear them all the time, but they wear them praying, and they are very, very, very uh, detailed in the rules. And so you can, you have them, and usually they're carried in a pouch, and there are two of them. Uh, there's one for the hand, and there is one for the uh, forehead. And so uh, they take the, the boxes, and the phylacteries are actually kept inside of a um, inside of a protective box. And so, because Deuteronomy six says on your hand and is frontless between your eyes, you have to put the hand one on first. But they don't actually use it put on their hand. Instead, the knot that's tied has to go toward your heart. It goes up on your weak hand. So because I'm right-handed, mine would go on my left hand. And the again, the knot uh, on the phylactery would go towards my heart. And then uh, it is wrapped tightly tell I don't do this. Um, so it's tightly wrapped seven times, obviously representing seven days of the week. Uh, 
It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Uh, that's the idea. And then the leftover gets wrapped up uh, around your finger, and there's always a lot of leftover. I'm not going to take time to do all of that. Uh, and so this is how they wear it, because they're and there's all much of this is just tradition that has developed, not actually in the Bible. And then the uh, the front lip between your eyes, a little bit easier to put on, but it always has to go on second uh, because you put the uh, on your hand first, because the word hand occurs first in Deuteronomy six, and this one just kind of slides on. And you may have seen pictures of Jews like at the Western Wall, and they're like this, and then they pray. But there are some other rules. Um, that they have to follow. Uh, you are not allowed to uh, talk while you're doing it. If for some reason you're required to talk, then there's, you have to undo it and do it again. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a long, you can go online and look this stuff up if you want all these rules and regulations that have developed over the centuries traditions about wearing phylacteries. And I don't want to talk about all that because look, there's nothing wrong with tradition. Um, my family's got lots of traditions we follow. Uh, every religious organization has traditions, um, secular organizations. We love, we like traditions. Uh, many of you at Christmas, you have all your Christmas traditions or your Thanksgiving traditions or your Easter traditions or your New Year's traditions or your birthday traditions or anniversary or whatever it is. So wrapping something seven times, there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. Um, you know, there are reasons for the traditions and some may be better than others, but whatever. Uh, that's not the point. The point is that this misses the point. This is not what Jesus was talking about. Okay. Um, so I want to remove these now because the purpose, or one of the purposes of these, is to intentionally be uncomfortable. Uh, and the reason for them being uncomfortable is because it is to help you keep awake and focused while praying. Um, so I'll set these off to the side for now. So if the point is not to actually literally have Scripture on your hand and forehead, on your arm and forehead, then what is the point of this passage? Okay. Well, I'm glad you asked because uh, there are a couple of things to know. First of all, again, Jesus condemned them just being literal about it because the reality is you can have a tradition, something you do literally, but with no meaning with no real purpose other than just doing the tradition. And so really there's gotta be more than that than just, hey, stick a box of Bible verses on your forehead. Like there's gotta be more than that. So what, what, what is the point? Well, the point obviously is everything we see is to be filtered by the Bible. That's what it means the frontless between your eyes. In other words, we view the world through what the Bible says. That means that the way we conduct ourselves is determined by the Bible. Where we put our priorities is determined by the Bible. Um, you know, I mean, it's just everything, the way we judge of whether or not something is good and holy, whether or not we determine, hey, I should participate in that or not, is determined by the Bible. Everything is viewed through the lens of the truth of God's Word. How we view marriage, how we view parenting, how we view children, how we view um, our hobbies, and uh, how we view uh, what we do on Sundays, and, and how we, you know, all those about being compassionate and kind, all that's everything we see. But not just the way we see and think, but also the way we behave. That's what would be the hands, what we do, you know, they work with your hands. And so the way we think, the way we see the world, and, and uh, the way we interpret what we see, and the way we behave and act and and uh, what we do, all that is determined by Scripture. And here's the reason we know this to be true. Look at what he says in verse 4, which I, uh, I believe is the, actually verses, uh, 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 well, verse 4, God is one, but verse 6 is the, the key. You know, you're loving God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Well, Never do we know in history that they wore a phylactery on the heart. Now, they'll argue that the knot is fulfilling because it's close to your heart, is fulfilling um, verse 6, but that's not really the idea. In the Bible, the heart is the seat of your intellect. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's your will. Um, and so 
the, the idea is that all of your life is determined by the Bible, all of it. And you're to teach it to your kids all the time. The number one goal of a parent is not that their kids get out of high school or if their kids get out of college or the kids get a good job. Or the number one goal for parents is my kids will walk with God. That's it. That is, that is the purpose for a parent's life. And, and that's it. That is your job. That's your goal. Um, and you filter what they watch, what they read, what they do for entertainment, what y'all do on vacation, what you do as a family. Everything, what you do as a parent, all is filtered by God's Word. And am I helping my children live the Bible? And that's the goal, that's the purpose, that's the meaning, that's the direction, that, that's what it's all about. That's why he says that, uh, and verse 5, if it's on your heart, then you teach them diligently. That means intensively and with, with clear determination and purpose. You teach them diligently to your children. And how do you do that? By having a Bible study? No, even though that's fine. But by just, it's a part of all your life. When you sit down, when you walk, when you uh, lie down at night, when you rise up in the morning, just as you go through life and you see something, you encounter something, um, you say to kids, hey, you know, this is what the Bible says about that. You're teaching your children to do what? Not to put a box on their forehead, but to put God's word between their eyes and filter everything by that. And when they behave, it's like, look, here's why we want you to behave this way, because this is what God says, that it's God's word on their hands. And so it's a part of us all the time. God's word determines and filters everything. That's why it's a front line between our eyes and, a, and it's on our hands. Everything we think and everything we do uh, our goal is to bring it in line with Scripture, and that's personally, and then uh, if we have children as parents, to all the time as we're going through life, the Bible, we're just inculcating it in them. Now, you realize that means you have to live it because they're watching you. And that's what Jesus said. They say it, but they don't do it. So we don't just tell our children, we demonstrate. That's why it needs to be on our heart all the time. So that's why these verses are so significant. They tell us so much about the, our worldview and how we behave and, and how we want to instill that on a daily, regular basis all the time um, with our children. So I just wanted to look at it. It's really interesting, the, you know, the way tradition develops, but how the tradition, instead of enhancing what Scripture says, can actually take away from what Scripture says. And that, of course, is Jesus' point in Matthew 23. So I want to go back and make sure we hear what Jesus said. They preach it, but they don't practice it. I don't want to be that person. I want to preach what I'm already practicing. And I hope that will be the case for you today. So today, have God's Word in front of your eyes. Filter everything through it. Behave in a way that fits and meets what God says in His Word. God bless you. Have a great day and a great week.